I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are not. Why, yes I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. Indeed I do, good sir. And I would be thrilled to share that information with you as soon as I am released from captivity. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. Oh, why, uh, of course. I'd never let you fight my kidnappers with my help, but without it. You lead the way. That was quite an adventure. We taught those convicts a thing or two, didn't we? Breaking myself out of a hostage situation, not to diminish your role in it, of course, but it was quite thrilling. Problem is, there's still no law in Prem. What are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage? Oh, no. I'm just a deputy, and I can't be a deputy without a sheriff. It's called chain of command. It should be someone brave like you, but more of a homebody. Someone who'll settle down and watch over us. I heard the powder gangers talking about someone in the prison named Myers who has some experience as a sheriff. He may be a good choice. Also, with the NCR so close by, you may be able to get them to take over the town. Not sure why they haven't helped out already. You will? That's just marvelous. I'll start thinking up questions for the interview. The sheriff that was incarcerated up at NCRCF may be a good choice. You also may be able to convince that NCR guy across the road to take the town under his wing. Although martial law doesn't sound so fun. Any luck finding a su- Ah, yes. My memory is much clearer now that I'm free from my bondage. I was uh, performing recon, gathering information on some of the powder gangers, when some great cons arrived with your friend in the suit. They were talking about some delivery they took from a courier. I assume that was you? They said they'd be heading through Nipton to Novak to meet a contact there.
enough?
Did you see that? That crazy bitch just attacked me out of nowhere. Not for long. I met her on the road a few days ago, and we've been traveling together since. We'd actually been flirting a little when she suddenly pulled a gun out and began yelling at me to hand my caps over. Now that I think of it, though, she laughed when I threw her my money. I think what she really wanted was my Lucky Charm necklace. Yeah, every once in a while you can find a cap with a blue star on it. They're pretty rare, so I started collecting them. And once I had enough, I made a necklace out of them, since I thought they were lucky. I will. That's the last time I pick up a straggler on the road, believe me. Hello there. It's good to see a friendly face. I almost took you for a raider, I did. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade. I'm missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on. There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, the tale goes, are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. Nah, I gave it up years ago too dangerous. And even if I did still collect them, I'd tell you the same. There's people out there so mad with the idea of treasure that they'll attack strangers just on the suspicion that they have some of those caps. All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now, but somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and Blue Star caps are no exception. It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the Blue Star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, standing a lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. That'll make him pretty damn old, but I've met a few people in my travels who claim they actually met him, and they weren't the lying type either. No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value, and that's enough to get people motivated.
No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars, watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Sure, but not no more. Powder Gang is small time, man. I'm a winner. I won the motherfucking lottery. <laughs> Later. Don't worry, I won't have you lashed to a cross like the rest of these degenerates. It's useful that you happen by. I want you to witness the fate of the town of Nipton, to memorize every detail. And then, when you move on, I want you to teach everyone you meet the lesson that Kaisar's Legion taught here, especially any NCR troops you run across. Where to begin? That they are weak, and we are strong, this much was known already. But the depths of their moral sickness, their dissolution, Nipton serves as the perfect object lesson. Nipton was a wicked place, debased and corrupt. It served all comers, so long as they paid. Profligate troops, powder gangers, men of the Legion, such as myself. The people here didn't care. It was a town of whores. For a pittance, the town agreed to lead those it had sheltered into a trap. Only when I sprang it did they realize they were caught inside it too. Yes, and herded them to the center of town. I told them their sins, the foremost being disloyalty. I told them that when legionaries are disloyal, some are punished, the others made to watch. And I announced the lottery. Each clutched his ticket, hoping it would set him free. Each did nothing, even when loved ones were dragged away to be killed. Ha! <laughs> Innocent. Hardly. Cowardly, though. They outnumbered us, yet not once did they try to resist. They stood and watched as their fellows were butchered crucified and burned one by one they stood and hoped their turn would not come each cared only for himself as are all crimes if you feel strongly about it attack us and soon you won't feel a thing
I don't know, but I've been told Uranium ore's worth more than gold I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep I got that bug and I can't sleep Uranium fever has gone and got me down Uranium fever is spreading all around With a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to take me some government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down well, I had a talk with the AEC and they brought out some maps that looked good to me And one showed me a spot he said he knowed So I straddled my jeep and headed down the road I reckon I drove about a hundred miles down a bumpy road out through the wilds When all of a sudden I bounced a stop at the foot of a mountain didn't have no top Uranium fever has done and got me down Uranium fever is spreading all around With a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to stake me some government land 